Thank you, Chair. My question, or my first question at any rate, is for Mr. Bastarash. And then if Mr. Pelletier wants to add something, I would be very interested to hear what you have to say. Mr. Bastarash, earlier you noted that Bill C-13 is, is very good in its current state. However, you also mentioned a few small things like the powers of the Commissioner of Official Languages and other certain aspects. such as the, the division of work between the Treasury Board and Canadian Heritage. I'd like to hear you say some a bit more about what is missing from the current version of C-13. Personally, I don't really think there's anything major missing. That's why I think we should get the bill passed and then work on uh, the regulations surrounding the bill to work out the details. The Act itself sets out objectives and a, a legal framework, but we cannot solve every single problem through legislative amendments. When you open the gates and ask everyone what would you like to change? You end up with a, a list 50 items long. And the fact that the, the bill as it's written would entail some progress gets lost. This bill has been in the pipes for a long time. There has been extensive consultations carried out. The government is aware of what people want. And a, a consensus has emerged about what can be done, because that's another aspect. There are things that I might want, but I, but that I won't propose because I know they wouldn't be accepted. For example, I think it is not logical for that everyone has the right to a criminal trial in their language, but not an appeal. But the federal government has shot, has shot that down for years. I don't know if the current government uh, will, will see things differently. I don't assume so. They've certainly never brought it up in their white paper, nor in the, uh, the bill. Thank you. Same question for you. First, I will note that the sea change I brought up earlier should not uh, go unnoticed. This is a major development. The federal government is recognizing the minority status of French in Canada and on the continent due to the predominant use of English. That is a direct quote from the, the bill. So the government is paying more attention to the vulnerable state of French. And this goes into the interpretation of the, of the act. Because when you look at the interpretation, and here I will look at the definitions and interpretation section, where it says that language rights should be interpreted in a broad and liberal fashion. They should also be interpreted in a remedial way. And that they should be interpreted through a lens of substantive equality. So there's this interpretive clause that is very much in line with the rest of the bill. It focuses on the remedial nature of the Official Languages Act and the particular vulnerability of French in Canada. So that's a step forward. And the political leadership that goes behind, that has gone into the bill, is something that should be welcomed. I've certainly welcomed it publicly. 
That is what has shown up in the interpretive clause. Do I have any more time? Yes, you do. For a very quick question. In your eyes, do you believe that there should be a reference to the Charter of the French Language in C-13? Here are my thoughts. First and foremost, I think it's perfectly fine for the, the act to mention the Charter of the French Language. I don't really have any changes to propose related to this aspect. And I think that the criticism from certain spheres in Quebec is baseless and, uh, and unfair. Do you mean from the criticism from Quebec Anglophones? No, I mean from the Quebec government. These are baseless criticisms and unfair ones. There, this bill is a major step forward. The federal government is extending an olive branch to Quebec. They are paying attention to the particular nature of Quebec and the Canadian Francophonie. In my view, Quebecers should welcome this rather than criticize it. Those are my thoughts. And Chair, if I may make it, I'll, I'll make a few political comments. I, I uh, used to be a political actor. I was minister of the Canadian Francophonie. So don't be surprised if I stop speaking as a lawyer for a second and start speaking as a politician. Suive alors. Je...